Are you ready? Okay. Good morning, everyone. I'd like to call to order this morning's meeting of the Architectural Review Planning Board on Thursday, November the 17th, 2022. With that, Renee, would you please take a roll call? Mr. Gray? Here. Mr. Roach? Here. Mrs. Smith? Here. Mr. Doherty? Here. Mr. Murphy? Here. Let also keep on the record that our assistant town manager and attorney Edward Nazaro and myself are present and absent with notice are our town manager Greg Dunham and Rob Canfield. Thank you. Uh, we have two sets of minutes to um, consider and approve uh, since we've had two meetings since our last meeting. Uh, can I have a motion please to uh, approve the meeting minutes of October the 27th? I will make a motion to approve the minutes. I'll second. Both minutes. Fair enough. Mr. Green? Yes. Mr. Roach? Yes. Mrs. Smith? Yes. Vice Chairman Doherty? Yes. Chairman Murphy? Yes. Have there been any additions, withdrawals, deferrals, or arrangement of items on the agenda? Uh, no, sir. Thank you. We've seen the dates coming before us. We changed the December meeting. Um, is anyone? I'm sort of able to say whether they're able to attend or not attend for the forthcoming meetings. So I won't be here on the 15th. You will not send her again. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? Because we do have things on it. Um, okay. <laughs> thank you. Uh, we now move to the public hearing part of the uh, this morning's meeting. And I have to ask, is there been uh, any ex parte communication? No. <laughs> I do have to declare. Um, I've been uh, in conversation with Peter Bennett. Uh, who's a resident of Plaza Soleil. He actually sent me a text this morning, which when we get after the presentation, I'd like to present his comments as well. Uh, with that, Renee, could you please administer the oaths for anyone who wishes to speak this morning? Anyone who wants to speak this morning, please stand right for a minute. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> the whole truth, nothing but the truth will Yes. Thank you, Renee. And we move on to the one and only item on our agenda this morning uh, in terms of application. And can we move forward with that? Uh, good morning, board members, uh, staff. My name is Kerry Glickstein. I'm here with my partner, Paul Corshain, uh, in connection with the Blue Water Cove development project on the north side of Plaza Soleil. Uh, before this board today, are two items uh, that we view as something that should be looked at concurrently, and that is upgrading the guardhouse that's currently there and the monument sign. Uh, just generally, uh, there's no uh, locational change to either improvement. The guardhouse stays where it is. The the sign stays where it is. Um, uh, I think in, in our view, uh, it has been communicated to us, or at least to me, from very early on um, uh, in this project, if we could do something to the guardhouse from some of the Plaza Soleil residents. Um, uh, that was, that request or that suggestion was held in abeyance really for quite some time till we got through uh, a lot of the other issues, which uh, uh, some of which are still fluid um, uh, because we're dealing with an existing community. It's different than, than something where nobody else is there. Um, the plans you have really 
speak for themselves. The 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 architecture, uh, uh, the little that it is, um, is I think something that's uh, uh, honorific of the town's architecture, the Anglo-Caribbean style of architecture. It's it's really a horizontal lap siding. The roof is changing, uh, proposed to a uh, a cedar shake with exposed rafter tails, um, a, a white color. Uh, nothing changes with the existing doors and windows. It's staff's request. We're adding light fixtures to the, the sides. Uh, and that's really about it um, on the guardhouse. The sign itself um, is also taking its cue from existing Gulf Stream improvements in that the coral stone is, is uh, um, mimicking the monument signs that the town uses for its street signs. Uh, I don't think there are any other distinctive features to the sign other than we're repeating the same elements that are there, just, just new. Um, uh, rather than, I don't think the, uh, I think just in general, this is really uh, trying to just update what's there. I'm not sure the some of the elements that are on the existing guardhouse today would be approved by this board and the commission. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so uh, without getting into that, I mean, I'm sure it was it was great when it was done, but like a lot of things, um, it's it's served its time and. We're looking to improve that in a way that I think is consistent with what you're seeing uh, architecturally um, in, in a lot of new construction. And frankly, a lot of the, the, the best homes that are uh, in South Florida uh, share this style of architecture. So with that, if, if any have any questions, I'm... Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. I, 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 it's real minor. I just, you mentioned Anglo-Caribbean, but the app refers to colonial West Indies, they're completely interchangeable. Yeah, it's semantics. It's I mean, good. I think okay. one architecture calls it one thing, somebody else calls it another. I mean, it's it's uh, uh, the roof on, I think the, 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 in that regard, Bob, the roof, which is very flat right now, yeah. is being raised to give it a little bit more dimension. Mm -hmm. um, uh, um, and then it's and then it's we're using cedar shake as the as the cover of that, which I guess to your point is 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 an authentic feature of any of those styles of architecture. I mean, I just see that you have landscape plans in here. Can you tell us about those? The landscape isn't changing. The landscape plans have already been approved. There's no change to the proposed plans. Um, uh, um, and the landscaping for the entrance would be done at the time that the entrance work is being done, which we're now projecting uh, based on just material issues and just trying to mim minimize the inconvenience march. But the roadway improvements and the landscaping would be done concurrently. And Carrie, you're also you're also uh, putting in uh, a sewer system there as opposed to the septic field that is presently existing, correct? Yes, sir. Um, yeah. uh, Curtis, we're we're um, connecting the existing guardhouse to our lift station, which would um, so whatever whatever code we 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 just were discussing this this week. Um, what to do with the existing septic when it's, it's abandoned because we are re-landscaping that area. So there's different methodologies for how to go about that. But yes, that's our responsibility. Okay. Yeah, well, other other than that, the I am so glad that so many members of Place du Soleil came because I'm very interested in seeing what, or hearing what any of you might think of the new structure eco or the new siding because it really is just re-siding the old existing house but you know this is sort of a clabbered style uh appearance as opposed to the spanish 
style with uh, with the terracotta roofs and everything that presently exists, which has is is very nice in my estimation too. But I'd really be interested in hearing what what anyone in the community thinks and whether or not there is a consensus for that. Sure. Um, uh, from our perspective, and having done this uh, uh, many times um, and sitting in various seats to, to deal with it, um, uh, it's my experience that doing this by committee is not a good way to go about it. Um, um, by that, I mean um, everybody has an opinion, tastes are different. Um, uh, and that's why when we approach staff with this, um, I think from the, the and, and I think from, I don't know the, the, um, the conversations, but when it was first sent to staff, I sent this to um, Chet, who I believe was then, or maybe still is the HOA president for his dissemination among the residents. But it's very hard to get consensus on these things. People like white, people like yellow, people like terracotta, people like uh, white tile. It's just, uh, um, but given the public notices, public settings of this meeting and then the subsequent commission meeting, uh, as well as our staff meeting, um, uh, uh, we felt that was the, the, the more productive way to, to, to get through it. Yep. That, that's right. So as Mr. Glickstein stated, an initial uh, application a pre-app was had with staff and he did uh, voice his concerns of the importance of the impact of the project and wanting to make sure that it got the right amount of attention um, but was um, fine-tuned to where we could have a clear path of approval which is why even though the impact realistically is so minimal that it would you know never be a level three we're talking about a minor accessory structure some changes uh, we wanted to make sure that we provided um, proper notice and it went through both the ARPB and the town commission. So your motion today will be a recommendation to the town commission. So there's been plenty of notice uh, provided and this would be the forum for any discussions about the aesthetic like Mr. Roach said. So with that, you know, at some point we can certainly open it up to public comment and see if there would be any beneficial discussion to uh, to modify it in any way, shape, manner, or form, or if it's acceptable and everyone likes it, um, you know, the, the chairman and myself um, have spoken about this. That's not ex parte because I'm a staff member, um, but I did mention to him that um, you know this is an important issue for Place Al Soleil. So to the extent that um, that Chet Snavely, the HOA president, and some others in the community uh, need to reach out to him or at least be present in the meeting, which has happened. Um, so hopefully we can make sure that this is something that is um, is looked upon very favorably by the residents over there because that's that's what we're looking to do. Right. So. Thanks. One of the things we always do at the meetings, and it's so many areas, we we do ask for the input from neighbors, sure. and as you can see on the response here today, but Chet did send it around to everybody, and we made comments and gave feedback. Um, I do have a couple of quick questions. Sure. I'm assuming that all the cameras are retained. The, uh, basically when you come into the building, uh, when, because when you come into Place Soleil, there's a monitoring system. Yep. Whatever's there, just uh, for yeah, the record, we're, it'll all be, the security measures will still be there. That's <laughs> correct. And to the extent that something's damaged while we're doing the work, it would be our responsibility, which invariably will happen. Um, that's our responsibility to, to make it right. Okay. And moving on to A2 of the presentation, can you find, um, Rebecca, could we get that on? Uh, are you driving, Renee? Not <laughs> A2, you said? Yes, please. This is all I got. Oh, okay. It's this is a site plan. This is, yeah. What are we talking about? The widening of the road? No. Yeah, that's it. That's yeah, probably. yeah. Is that it? Okay, yes, sorry. On this, it says there's a metal gate. And I thought we'd address that in previous meetings. I don't, that, that must be, a, that's this, a mistake. This is an old survey because this is all we had as a town. Oh, right. right. But it's, just pulled it that's fair enough. Here. It's just yeah. that I know we there's had, no gate. We had that discussion. Yeah, I'm sorry. Um, for that. I, I, I believe the location of that metal gate is the entrance to 2900. Oh, okay. okay. That's fine. Uh, that's so my, uh, it, it is an existing sorry, metal Perry, gate. Sorry, Perry. It's just that, you that's know, that was a pre-incendiary item. On private property. Um, 
And just on the timing, you said about trying to run concurrently. How, how do you think the, the, the time span of build and the disruption, which I know you're making every effort to minimize, what sort of time span will everybody trying to drive out sort of? Have well, um, it's a great question. We, we had a, a, a meeting about that just this week, and uh, um, I've asked the site work contractor and his subcontracting crews uh, to meet with the chief of police and uh, Mr. Dunham because there are two options and and those options uh, uh, involve one option is trying to maintain the existing entrance during construction uh, which means uh, a lot of flagmen uh, and a lot of mobilizations because you can only work on one side at a time. The other option uh, is to build a temporary road that would take residents from Plaza to, to essentially block the entrance as it is now, use a temporary access, which is already permitted through DOT, through our construction entrance, essentially build a road. Yeah. And and uh, uh, and don't quote me on this because we're still working through some of this details. But it in doing that, it takes the disruption, it cuts it in half. Right. And and uh, uh, we were given, uh, I think the number was eight days from the site work contractor for the temporary road. And it was double that to use to try to keep the entrance open. The bigger problem, though, is while keeping the op the 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 name of the game here is to minimize disruption yeah. and and but also what is the safest way to do it? Mm -hmm. And we have and that's why I've asked the contractor to engage Greg and, and, and the chief of police and, and run through the specifics of this. Um, the short explanation is, is everybody feels the temporary road is much safer. Um, the reason is, is because the confusion that this is going to create with flagmen and it being altered from one day to the next uh, and the backup that, that results from uh, the disruption, I think, is we're thinking it's going to be worse. Okay. In addition to it just being twice as long, so um, and, uh, and whichever route's taken, how how are we going to tell everybody, the neighbours, this is the, the plan? But how, just how do we get it out to everybody so no one comes screaming around the corner? And of course, and that's why I've asked the contractor to reach out to. Greg and the police chief, right. you know, so, so, so we're not going to just, people aren't just going to all of a sudden show up yep. and, and say the road's blocked. This is going to, there's going to be a, a, a long runway to this yep. for notice so that everybody understands what's going on. And, and look, it stinks. There's no, they just, it's, it's just, you know, there's no, no way around it. But I think in the end, like, some of the things, if they're executed properly, it's going to look great. Right. So, uh, and the reason I raised it is just for the record. You know, it's clear you have options, the, the the route you're taking to discuss it, but also that we do need to minimise it. And you said to do that, and we have to communicate it to the residents. That's it's just to have that on the record. But I know it's not a perfect science at the moment. Crystal ball gazing. I understand that, but you've explained the options you're looking at. Generally, I think that's that you have the information yep. in real time, what we have just from this week, trying to figure out what is the, the best way to do this. And, and we're going to, you know, uh, push this out as far as we can. I mean, you know, the, the all of the towns, it seems, have kind of lost a lot of their seasonality to them. Mm -hmm. So it used to be. You know, yep. you could plan these things in the summer and nobody would be around. Now it seems like it's just many people around now in the summer. But in any event, that's that's what we know. And I've asked everybody involved to engage the people that really are front and center with public safety and notice and residents right. and 
Okay, thanks, Gary. What I'd like to do is, is can, we, can we focus on the guardhouse? And if there's any comments specific to the guardhouse, and then we'll move on to the side, just so we can. Jim, I saw you put your hand up. Do you, do you want to speak? Can you go to the microphone, please? Yeah. I have, Carrie, I have one other sure. Sorry, question. Sure. And once you put in a temporary road, I just want to be perfectly clear that you are not going to say, uh, come back to us at a later point in time and say, well, since the road is already there, can't we use it for Deepwater Cove? Because we have already addressed that issue of no, private entry. It's it's permitted as a temporary access road, mm -hmm. and okay. and and I I don't know when those lapse. I think they're, but the whole purpose of this presentation and the significant work that we're doing to this entrance is to make that the primary entrance. Yeah, so, I, I get right, the drift no. of it. I mean, it, 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 it enhances question. your sales of houses, et cetera. It also potentially enhances the entryway to Place de Soleil as long as it's compatible with the neighborhood. We think so, with and I, but to your question, absolutely yeah. not. It's, it's just a temporary, that that road and that permit is really for, con, you know, has always been envisioned up until the, this consideration for construction traffic. Right, good. Jim, was it, is your comment specific to the guard house? Oh, okay. um, Sorry, could you, we need it on record, that's all. And, um, I mean, it's quasi-judicial, so can we just get everyone who plans to speak on this matter to raise their hand and be sworn by the town clerk, please? Please stand and raise your right hand if you plan to speak on this item. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. <clears throat> yeah, I'm Jim Malone. I've been in Place Ayosole for probably 30 years now. I used to be on the board with Malcolm a long time ago. <clears throat> but I've noticed over the years, <clears throat> our architectural review people have been pretty solid in what they require and not to change the identity of our community by not allowing tin roofs and the, the um, tiles on the roofs have to be a certain color and in fact some of them have to be repainted and my neighbor in fact put a new roof on and they made him paint it a different color because and I, and I think it's a good thing that we've maintained this um, this control over the years <clears throat> a, um, a cedar roof to me is doesn't have anything to do with the way the architecture scheme is in our community and the stone look i personally i like the stone look of the guardhouse the way it is if it could be expanded and raised but still keep that stone look this clapboard siding is to me doesn't make sense it doesn't look that good <clears throat> and i was noticing the sign my neighbor used to be he's moved moved down but he's the one that built that former sign i think it's a very attractive sign maybe it needs to be lifted uh, but I think that's a much more attractive sign. It's not as current, not as new and contemporary, but still we're taking steps away from the traditional look that we've spent a lot of years on trying to maintain. Now all of a sudden we're putting a we're putting this uh, cedar roof on um, cedar clapboard roof or whatever. When we've held the roofs in this community for so long to be to maintain the look of of what, what it has always been. So I think this is this is quite a, a deviant from um, from what it what I would expect it to be going okay. forward. That's that's all thanks, I have to thanks, say. Jim. Chet, did you want to speak on, on this one? Um, the board reviewed these concept plans that we got uh, it was, they were a little rougher than what we see here. Uh, but the board, the HOA board, uh, was very comfortable with the new look. I did not know about the cedar shake roof. Uh, you know, I, again, I don't want to redesign his program for him, but I would think that a concrete shingle roof would be more consistent. Uh, everything else we felt was new and fresh and, uh, uh, gave a more current feel uh, for the development of PIS. 
uh, we, as, as the board, we supported the, uh, the new guardhouse look and uh, we supported the new sign look. Now, I don't know if that can be fine tuned or something, but uh, our overall impression was we approved that. We, we never saw, uh, we were never privy to the new design, uh, actual road design of the entrance and the moving of some of those substantial royal palms. I did, we just never, yeah. never knew about that. So we had no, we had no yeah, perception okay. on that. That was addressed when we went through that <laughs> quite a while ago in terms of that one. So that, okay. that's gone through. But can I just go back to the, 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 the roof? Check, are you saying that basically, obviously, and I know it came round, that it's only the roof that you would ideally like change. Yeah, today is the first day I heard uh, Cedar Shake. Right. Okay. Uh, and I believe that um, you know everything else uh, we liked. We liked the uh, the stone in the sign. Mm -hmm. uh, we liked uh, the stone material in the sign because we felt it was very Bermuda inspired with the uh, coral stone. Uh, other than that, uh, you know, just we've got the the seal or Plaza Soleil on there for uh, Gulfstream on there, which uh, tells everybody we're part of Gulfstream. Yep. Uh, other than that, uh, thanks, thanks, Jim. We had. And for the record, as I said, I had ex parte communication with Peter Bennett, who's a resident, and I would like to read out the text that he sent to me this morning. Um, Malcolm, I'm unable to attend the site, the meeting, sign meeting this morning. But the one thing that ought to be changed is the typeface for the for Soleil, as it as it is a designer fad used used now and will quickly go out of favour. Please suggest to use, uh, sorry, please suggest a more traditional face that will stand the test of time. My background is in typesetting. Thanks, Peter. Uh, that's on record. So his comment is. Gary, that it's just the typeface, right? That's that's his idea to be more traditional. So could you come up and address those last couple of points that we've just heard, please? Um, sure. Uh, thank you for the comments. Um, uh, but it just underscores my earlier point that it's just impossible to satisfy people's tastes and um, the comment of let me just kind of go in reverse order while it's fresh in my mind i wouldn't know a modern typeface from a traditional one i'm looking at that while i'm looking okay we can look at an alternative that that's be, fine i i yeah. wouldn't know what to suggest um, right. um and uh that just came from our designer yep. who's who specializes in this so it's something well, a piece of it literally he is He's contacted me several times. All right, we'll we'll look at that. Yeah. I don't know what that seems to be a pretty easy yeah. fix, yeah. right? Okay. okay, so, um, uh, so I think the only the only other so just kind of in general, um, in in my opinion, is no more valuable than anybody else's, um, uh, or or informed. The uh, there are numerous homes in Gulfstream with siding and cedar shake. Um, I shouldn't, maybe numerous is probably not the right word, but there are several homes. Um, cedar shake actually happens to be one of the most expensive roof finishes today. Um, uh, and it is, it has been around for a very long time. Uh, it is certainly more, uh applicable and used up north um uh but we're open to changing that uh um i don't know exactly what we would use on the fly it would be a concrete darker tile um, obviously we've got to retain the style which is colonial west indies here but we, that's that's a question of i mean for, for example you this board approved a home in the community Yep. with exactly this architecture mm -hmm. um and in fact i think staff um when we brought it in uh i don't know uh um who but they were very complimentary about the cedar shake because they said we don't see this a lot and uh um uh so i would you know i'm i'm, I'm a little hesitant 
to to because we think it's going to look really nice. There are homes in Plaza Soleil with cedar shake. Mm -hmm. They happen to be very old, but but yeah. but um, and in terms of the horizontal siding, you know, um, we are doing it's it's you could pick your from Monterey style to Anglo Caribbean, um, even some Bermuda style homes use it, and it's it's just a very tasteful finish. Uh, um, I think. Um, and again, um, this board and, and staff approved w one of the homes, which will be used quite a bit in that community with mm -hmm. horizontal siding. So uh, that to me kind of defines that structure the way it is and to pull that off and, and to just paint it stucco is... is, is yeah, I, I, think, I think the comments about the, the, the um, vertical side, I think everyone agrees looks fine the comments were about the roof. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think that was, i think there was a somebody made the com I, uh, sorry Terry. just i'm um, just the in terms of the the cultured stone that's on oh, there yeah. now that's not even allowed in your code uh um so no I, there's no doubt the upgrade uh, the fact that i know there's in basic here there's a septic tank there we all know what happens to the septic tank you're going into the main light so a great it needs an upgrade there's absolutely no doubt about this and the steps you've taken um the only comments we had were really three you've addressed the one about the sign and the the comment feedback about the um the roof but it all fits into code at the moment it would be it fits absolutely in code in terms of west Berlin. Yeah. I think what I would, I think the only kind of open issue really is kind of the roof. And, and I was talking with Paul just when I was hearing the comment, does he think, you know, can, you know, what's out there in the, the, uh, the universe of, of, cause it would just be a concrete, uh, Flat, yeah, concrete tile. flat flat concrete yeah. tile i mean yep. you know it just i mean the the point was to make the 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 guard house kind of stick out in a positive way not um and if we can find that i'm i'm, I'm right. great with that okay. so uh and we can save i think you've made it people. clear that you there's no deal breakers here in terms of both points can be addressed yes i, I understand and I think maybe the thing to do just to move this along, if you're predisposed to approve this, is we'll resolve that before we get to the commission. You know, with, I just have one comment. If, sure. If you do consider changing the roof, then we need to think about the doors and the windows being bronze, because every time we've had a roof and we have bronze doors and windows, it never looks right. And it takes on that kind of modern spin and doesn't know what it is sometimes. So I actually prefer the cedar shape with the bronze as do we and I, and, I do too. and yeah. for that reason we you know this wasn't just a random choice we we saw what's no, no, there it's the gone into it you know sorry not you know. i agree with about the um font pedal yeah. the sign it looks modern and i'm fine with that i wouldn't know what to pick but we'll find something either, that yeah. works <laughs> right we'll, we'll figure and that Harry, you, you adjusted the pitch on the roof didn't you? yes it's very it's flat if you very go flat. So, so we've <laughs> elevated that to give it some dimension. Yeah. Uh, you can see you can. So that'll. It's it's not a lot because it's a small structure, but it almost looks flat the way it is now. It'll it'll it'll. So you'll see more of it. Okay. Anything? Yeah. Check. Can you come up because we need it on the record? Thanks. Yeah. There's a lot of yeah, there's a lot of exercise today. Yeah, I just had a question because we don't have. You know, any any scale on here? Am I right? You're raising the the eave of the roof two feet. Did I hear that someplace? Twelve inches. Twelve inches. That goes up twelve inches. Okay, so that'll get past the the box trucks can get in without hitting it. We're not we're not moving. No 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 no. no it's talking about elevation. That's right. The, right. Yeah. So yeah. that's kind of any effect on any traffic. We're not expanding the envelope. Not what I'm asking. Okay. Yeah. This this piece right here. Gary. Yep. That is going up 12 inches from, yeah, from, from the soffit line to the peak of that roof. Okay, because we've had trouble with box trucks coming in and out, yeah. getting too close to the guard shack and taking part of the roof out. Yeah. So that is going to help. Oh, yeah. I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. Because of the pitch. Yes. Yeah. I have. Yeah. 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 Ye
Yes. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. Yes. So we'll, we'll, if the truck is 12 inches smaller, we'll be. Well, it's the same truck, but basically it's the heights increase. Yes. So the gaps yeah. in the Correct. Yeah. 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 Correct. Yeah. We've had some unscheduled dismantling of that. <laughs> and, uh, and, and, and to be clear on the, on the, on the shake route, just didn't know that. I understand. You know, and mm -hmm. that's not intentional. We submit it to staff, yeah, yeah. And, and and I don't know the process. We just we view staff as the clearinghouse for information, and, and otherwise, somebody says, "Well, I didn't get it, and he did." So, uh, um, uh, no problem. Got no. it. Um, you brought up something that was a good question, and I were you asking? You go back to the microphone, Mr. I'm sorry, Glickstein. I'm sorry. Yeah. It's okay. Um, uh roof space walls. oh oh yes um that's a good point that chet brought up but i think that the expanded traffic lane is going to eliminate mm, the yeah. problem that that's we've awesome. had i mean that was one of the reasons that we did that yeah. um i will say that I, I heard chet bring up something about the royal palms and and while the landscape plan has been approved we were also looking at that this week too because there are some uh logistical problems issues with trees that large um whether we have to i think i i i know everybody's heard this before but but paul and i have spent a lot of time on this entrance and we want it to look great and it will look great it'll look it looks great now it's going to look better when we're finished and and whether that means we're bringing more trees in on both sides uh it's it's um the entrance is i guess you could say things are always a dollars issue but in terms of that entrance it's critically important for us and it's not going to be treated yeah, as an asterisk right. or an after and i think we have it mutually aligned right yeah in all our motions we always say the landscaping if there's any major um sorry if there's any uh, changes it goes back to stuff and if there's any major changes it comes back to the yes so we will take that as a case by case. Okay. Fair enough. Thanks, Kerry. Okay. Is there any more discussion from the public? Jim, can you come up, please? Thanks, Jim. I, I just wanted to state real quickly that, you know, uh, Chairman, you mentioned that, you know, it meets the code. This is a unique situation. It's town property. We're really trying to get input from the residents to make sure that the design is acceptable to the right. residents. So it's not really just meeting code. Mr. Glickstein is also looking for feedback and making sure that there's full buy-in yeah. with this project. So, so as we said, it I, it's a it's a um, unique situation yeah, just yeah. because it's town and property. As we said, Trey, there will never ever be in a group come on 100%. But this forum is about hearing the feedback. From yes, the sir. That. Thank you. And, and it's town property for the developers paying for it, right? Yes, yes. So it's an if that's that, that's correct. And again, you know, we have mutually aligned interests in making sure that this entrance is very nice, us mm -hmm. for our residents and for you know the properties okay. that are right. marketing. Okay, thanks, Jim. Um, over the years, there's been a number of um, different concerns about um, security, and uh, the conversation on a number of occasions has been: should we have a guard at that and have a you know a gates come down or whatever? I'm just wondering. It, Going forward, that still might be a consideration over the years. Is has anything been built into these plans that might have that all set up just in case that we have to, or that they've decided to to have security there, uh, armed security. I mean, just guards there and a and a guard gate. Is there going to be the support fixtures necessary to implement that, or is this going to be all redesigned again for that? That's right. right. So right. So at this point, I think that this is a purely aesthetic uh, project, and the, the, anything that you're talking about would be solely the town's responsibility in making sure that it, anything would be modified to accommodate that. Due to the public nature, you know, the roads are public. Um, it, it's very difficult to. Um, I mean, you have stacking, a lot of other issues. Um, that will come into play with posting someone there and then legally you are not required to take ID or anything like that. So at this point, I, I think the town feels comfortable that we have a secure area given there's only one area in and out and we have video of, of mm -hmm. license plates and everyone that's coming in and out. Um, that's certainly something that we can we can discuss um, separately with with the HOA uh, if they feel like you know there's something else that the town could do. But I don't think at this point um, that would be um, 
like feasible from like a logistics standpoint, given, like I said, the nature of the roads. Now, if, you know, if the HOA, you know, wanted to maintain the roads and take on that responsibility, then, you know, there would, could be something like that where uh, a guardhouse could be, uh, or, a, you know, a gate could be installed and, and stop traffic. But that's, uh, you know, that's a huge expense to the HOA that is a whole nother conversation. Sure. Yeah. Well, I was just, I don't advocate it either. I'm just wondering no, that would be an no, expense going forward. And that's forward. what this forum's if, for, Jim. If if any happens. ideas? We should... <laughs> okay, thank, thank you. In that case, if there's no more public comment or comment from the board, um, can I ask for a motion, please, taking account of what we've heard today in terms of um, the applicant's um, intention to accommodate the request about the type place? Um, okay. The next I'll make a motion uh, to approve a level three architectural site plan to permit the renovation of the Place du Soleil guardhouse sign and upgrade uh, existing landscaping and materials with the following condition. Any minor modification to the approved landscaping shall be submitted to the town manager for review and approval, and any major modification shall be brought back to the ARPB for review and approval prior to the commencement of the landscaping. And before we get a second, I'd just like to note that this is a, a motion to recommend approval, yes. not approval. So I'm sorry about the typo in the, in this, in the plan there. Okay. It's what? It, it's a recommendation for approval. A recommendation. Yes, sir. All right. Thank right. you. So, can we just Going note that the? Uh, do we? Do we need a formal number two on that as well, just to say about the typeface? So that if you would like to include a different condition. Yes. No. Sorry. So what else do we, we have? We just need to say that, uh, and the, the other typeface, the typeface, the condition is that for the um, um, the sign commission meeting. That yeah, the, that the commission that will the, sign uh, off on whatever uh, is. Well, no, what we're going to say is we're going to say that the applicant is going to change the typeface for the commission meeting. That's the condition of the. The uh, tile face? Typeface. A uh, typeface. Oh, yeah. yeah, and that the, uh, and let me add number two that the uh, commission will approve the typeface we'll, of, uh, we'll receive the of typeface, any yeah. sign uh, yeah. that is erected. Yeah. Yeah, we, we just, we, 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 I'm just going to, sorry, judges, take out the approved, but they're going to be presented with the new typeface. Can I just modify that? Sorry, okay. sorry Curtis. Right. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Renee. Does okay. anyone have a second. Yeah. motion? Okay. In that case, Renee, can I have a vote, please? Can we have Mr. a vote? Mr. Green. Yes. Mr. Roach. Yes. Mrs. Smith. Yes. Vice Chairman Doherty. Yes. Chairman Murphy. Yes. Thank you, everyone, for the presentation and your comments. We now move on to the next item, items by staff. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. So, you know, we, Rob Canfield is not was not be able, was not able to be here today. Um, so, because of that uh, and, and some other things, I've decided to hold off on any sort of presentation review. Um, Mayor Morgan actually mentioned that it may be beneficial to have a sort of workshop jointly with the commission and the ARPB to go over some of the, the design guidelines as this is, you know, we're dealing with a, a lot of new and interesting things in town with the, the, the FEMA elevations. And, you know, it's, it's always kind of the same conversation with massing and, uh, and how that fits into designing homes. Um, yeah, and, that, and that conversation will include probably special exceptions, variances, um, the nature of the quasi-judicial process, declaring ex parte communications, what your responsibility is there, and just some basic things. To the extent that any of that is not covered and any of you would feel uh, like you would like some additional guidance, I'm always available. I'm here, you know, all the time and after hours if you have any questions. So I'd just like to add that I thought this would be a good meeting. Here it is. It's you know it's 9:15. <laughs> uh, you know when we we you know I think Malcolm even uh, has a half an hour to to spare. Yeah, I've got a meeting at 10. I, I can drive up and down at 95. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So um, that that is in the works. And like I said. Yeah, and it doesn't have to be Tuesday at 8:30, right? No, it, if we need. It could be it, any time. Yeah, Four o'clock on a Wednesday. Yeah. Yeah. Correct. Yes. Yes. Sir. I think the biggest advantage is that is that we're all on the same page. Because, because we don't want to get to the position where we 
pass things up to the commission and they, they send it back. If we're all on the same page, and this is probably a record, we know that the thorny issue of special exemption, we, we know that that is something that, not to say we don't agree, but the interpretation has to be consistent. <coughs> One of the things that I want. So I think it's a good idea that we, everybody who has a um, say impact in the decision making process should be on the same page. Sure, and, and that goes to staff as well because staff is the initial stopgap between the applicant's ideas that may not be uh, looked upon favorably and the ARPB. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, just the other day, it may have been, even been yesterday, we had an application um, that you'll see probably in the coming months for a home that wanted the 300 square foot special exception. And staff's guidance at this point is it's a larger lot. We had a larger lot come through. The town commission said, no, it's a new build. We're not approving the full 300. However, we did get a special exception approved. Just so all of you know, both those applications were approved. Um, I think Monday we had a special meeting. So both those applications that you recommended approval were approved with no additional modifications. The Chippendale rear railing for the Pahoda house yeah, at the commission, at the commission meeting um, was, was accepted. So, you know, you guys did an excellent job getting that, having that extra meeting. No, I'm, I'm yeah. serious. You know, no, no, those, no, both of those applications were very difficult and, uh, and were seen by you know, I think both boards multiple times. And because of that, uh, I think we'll have uh, a good finished product. However, it'd be nice to, like the chairman said, all be on the same page, making sure that staff has a good idea. Because at this point, the conversation with any new build is the town commission doesn't like a 300 square foot extra, but if it's maybe a smaller lot, it's not the full 300, there are some other considerations, it, it may get through. So staff would also like some clear guidance on uh, on how to apply the code because you know some some commissions hand out variances like candy and some of them like historically say absolutely not because there are some very strict criteria so if we're going one way or the other we all need to be on the same page and to do that I think it would be beneficial as the mayor indicated to have a joint meeting legally does that need to have to be a public meeting? It, it would be noticed I mean we're talking about topics that are going to be impactful um, it's not necessarily changing the zoning but it's the application of our of our code and interpretation I mean it's usually beneficial from for someone like me who has no history um, yeah. to, to be able to understand precedent and yeah, uh, particularly when I'm the uh, I'm needed to to fill out the <laughs> fill out the meeting agenda, so yeah. <laughs> it would be hugely beneficial. Right, for me. yeah, for all of us. Yeah, no, for all of us. It's said, it's said, it's said earlier on. Oh, we're, but, we're all learning. But Michael's already read the the manual cover to cover. Sorry, time. You know, the test mm -hmm. comes up next week. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, sit next to you, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And no and no phones allowed. Yeah. Thanks, Ray. Yeah, so so which zoning district is known <laughs> for its its eclectic mix of architectural styles? No. Yeah, so, and moving on. Uh, any items from board members? In that yeah. case, the public would love to join in if we had any. And so with that, thank you everyone, and I adjourn this meeting. Thank you. Well,